Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, in which we're playing as a beautiful Iberian Union last time. We had a couple more issues between Franco and Salazar, and uh, yeah, we were having a good time. We got quite a few comms to go through as well in this episode, but let us continue anyways. 50% halfway done with the dam, but down under. Salazar's plan has landed in Canberra, which was relatively modest compared to the other great cities of the Pacific, but still of great importance. While the heat may be unbearable, we must pursue on in the establishing deeper economic and diplomatic ties with the Australians as they stand as a major OFN ally in the Pacific, and if we can get on good terms with them, it could lead to further reprochment with the rest of the OFN, and especially America. In our trip, we can focus on talking business with the Australians, in spite of the distance between our two nations, in order to develop our economic presence in the region. Alternatively, we can meet with the President of Australia, Harold Holt, and establish a clear diplomatic policy with the country. Both have their advantages. Furthering economic ties would mean that our investment both to and from our countries would be more diversified. Uh, shooting us from a potential crash should any other country we've talked to fall into economic crisis. Whereas further diplomatic ties could be our gateway to the OFN. Regrettably, we do not have enough time to do both, so Salazar must decide. So, let's see. We can talk about business. Our GDP will receive a small boost. Meet with the president. So, uh, this is one of the comments from yesterday. Stop picking business decisions. That was recommended for me to do, and since this is Salazar and not Franco, we're going to go ahead and meet with the president instead and have a good time, hopefully, with that individual. Mr. President, Prime Minister, whatever his name is, Holt. Something Holt. Harold Holt. That's the name. Cool. Very, very, very good. Now, in this episode, it's March 3rd, 63, so we might see a certain nation go kaboom, but we'll see what happens. And last time, uh, this state, oh, Western Jerusalem is the capital now. That's kind of cool. Oh, what's that culture? Egyptian. Oh. oh, we have another division. Oh, actually, it's going to increase expenses for now, which I don't like. We're going to get up to, like, maybe 24 out of 24, and then 4 out of 24. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we don't want that much in terms of a military, but that's okay. Iberian Council debate veto powers. Every Iberian knows that the Cadillos tend to veto each other's decisions, even the most trivial ones, something that is used by underground publications to satirize their figures and for the common people to make jokes about. This veto situation was a matter debated today for the reformation of or formation of the Iberian Council. Franco proposed that veto powers should be reserved for himself and Salazar, but Salazar unsurprisingly said no to this and proposed that a proposal could only be vetoed if the number of members of the council who decided to veto it was higher than the number of those who did not want to veto it. Franco then refuted Salazar's argument, asking if those members who had a blank would simply be ignored. This spiraled out of control and ended up being a heated philosophical debate of what is a veto and whether a veto could be nullified if it was discovered it was motivated to harm the Iberian people rather than help them out. At the end of the, at the, end of the day, though, nothing was agreed on, and so we must expect the veto powers will remain in the hands of the Cordillos, at least for now. So then, what constitutes a veto? A veto? Or Danny to veto? No, probably just a veto. But we'll see what happens. Ooh, the foreign leaders lean towards Salazar. That's not good. We're going to mess up here. Uh, well, we'll mess some things up here. Uh, a couple other comments. So why do I choose infrastructure at random? Uh, to build up infrastructure? Well, that's mostly because, I don't know, I just like clicking on things. I have the power to click on options, so that's why I do it. However, sometimes I do actually make sure that I actually build up in appropriate places. Um, I sometimes don't build up areas where there's resources, mostly because it really doesn't matter. Because of the resources that we have, we have access of already. Sure, we can build in places that have, oh, the Asuda Crisis. Build up in locations that have resources that we need, which I'll try to build up earlier on. But if there are places that I want to just build up anyways, it honestly, for TNO, it doesn't really matter that much a little bit. Yes, it's, I make mistakes, and I should really pay attention to where I do stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, for now, no more shared intelligence. You know what? This gives us no pen penalties. Retrieve our troops. Expel Italian advisors. Pull out our investments. Our decreases, our expenses will decrease. We're just going to go with no more shared intelligence. So purposefully counteract the German intelligence capabilities and gain individual strength. The member of the triumvirate has pushed have pushed to, uh, to have their intelligence services share information with each other. It had proven to be very effective a policy, as all member states greatly profited not just by learning about German activity, but also from the techniques that other agencies were using. In the current climate, though, we cannot have this continue, for obvious reasons. Having sensitive data fall into the hands of our new enemies could be just as dangerous as if now as if the Germans gained access to it. We must remain vigilant in these times and trying to protect our national security even from the unseen threats. Now, we wanted to improve relations with Turkey, or uh, Italy, I mean. We wanted to have good relations with the Italians, but... I don't know. At the end of the day, I really got to look out for Iberia itself. No matter what happens, Iberia is home. So, someone recommend also, I play as... In Kaiserreich, as Ottomans. Yes, I will eventually. I will. I'm not sure when I'll do it, but I know I will. So, another comment was... 
Salazar releases a book, which I will take as the next decision that pops up if we can do it. Uh, it was recommended to write a book, and then in that memoir that we write for Salazar, we give advice to all the people, which sounds like a great thing, and nothing bad could ever happen from that. Never, ever, ever. Now, we could spend a little bit more money on the dam, but the Lisbon infrastructure plan planned years ago in 62. The Lisbon infrastructure plan has finally been completed. Lisbon now possesses a sister road to the one in Madrid. Finally. Ah, better infrastructure, my friends. Even better. One, two, that's good. Building up where we need to be, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. The debt, merely 1.08 billion more a year. Not bad. Not bad. And we got max out infrastructure, or I mean, civilian and construction spending for now, which is okay with me. Oh, I'm joining here with my cat, Binky, enjoying the sunshine and the day. Oh, crud, we lose political power. I didn't realize that. No more show of intelligence. Immigrants under watch. During the times of the Triumvirate Alliance, many immigrants from the member states and their satellites chose to reside in Iberia. Whether to enjoy the beautiful country or take part in the economy, we welcome them with open arms. Following the collapse of the alliance, many returned back to their nations of origins as tensions rose. Some, however, have not taken this step and choo instead choosing to remain on the peninsula. As much as we have appreciated their contributions to our society, we cannot take their presence lightly anymore. There can only be two reasons for the continued living in Iberia. Naturalization or spying. Due to being difficult to distinguish between regions on the surface, we must put all of these immigrants under watch to test our loyalty. There cannot be any possibility that they can do damage to the Iberian state. We get just a meager 2% more stability, but you know what, that's okay. You know what, I prefer more stability than less stability. And since we're already spending political power, add another million dollars to the budget, you might as well. Ooh, do we finish something? King Farouk the first is dead, the Republic of Madagascar is gone, and ooh, oh, the Higginagdut movement has defeated the military state of Madagascar. Uh, we're almost done building the radio tower, great, but the Alanthroparos. Earlier today in Morocco, a military patrol unearthed the fossils of a massive dinosaur in the Atlas Mountains. The nearly complete skeleton had appeared to be that of a sauro sauropod, with many scientists declaring it as a possible relative to the Brachio Brachiosaurus. Debates have already, de debates have already begun uh, on what classification it belongs to, and many paleontologists are flooding the scene to try and find more clues of how and when the dinosaur lived. Their best guess is so far that the 22-ton behemoth lived during the Middle Jurassic and roamed all over the local area in large numbers upon hearing his description. One of the soldiers who found it stated that a large, useless, dumb lizard must be named after the infamous German project to drain the Mediterranean. The name Atlanthroposaurus quickly caught on and many citizens in Iberia have found interest in the dinosaur, including government officials. This specific specimen has been even ordered to be put on display in Madrid as a testament to Iberian strength and knowledge, and will arrive in less than a week. Who, don't, who doesn't love dinosaurs? Dinosaurs, yes please. Uh, another comment from history, though, regarding the Iberian nation is, and the person said, Don't screw up my nation. I'm not going to try to. I can't promise anything, but uh, what happens, happens, you know. And besides, I'm going to make sure in the end that we do reform as best we can, even if, if even if I just spend like a lot of time off screen, or maybe I'll have a time lapse if I screw up. My goal is not to screw up. I mean, that's that's like one of my main goals, not to screw up, but which would not be very cool if I did. So I'm going to try to not screw up. Let's see, military factory, eh, that's kind of okay. We're getting resources. Let's go for horizontal industrial organization. Two for more max factories in the state. Better base and output. Even though we lose a little bit of efficiency growth, it's only 10%, so that's not too bad. Uh, 0.87, and we should be done with our focus very, very soon. A whole 43% stability, hopefully. And here we go. Great. 43%. Actually, we can do both. I didn't realize that. Oh, come back home? Hey, I might as well. In a similar vein to many immigrants coming to live in a glorious union, and a large number of our own people have also emigrated to the vast lands that the Troyumbert used to encompass. Now, that has ceased to exist as a political institution. We must move quickly to safeguard the rights and lives of our citizens abroad. We have no information on how the former alliance members will treat those in their eyes could be potential spies. Equally terrible would be their use against us, whether in economic terms or to spread seditious lies. In order to carry out their return in a smooth and peaceful manner, we must start a propaganda campaign to reach the expats. If we can convince them of the patriotic duty they must fulfill, and the material wealth they could accrue by coming back, they may be even to do so by their own volition. Oh, military austerity? Uh, I think I think we could use a little, just a little bit more. Just, just, just a tiny bit more. Civilian budget boost. Now, we could do actually pretty darn well with the debt, but you know what? We're big spenders here. And it was also recommended in yesterday's comments that Keep an eye, don't go too crazy with your spending, and I know, I know, I shouldn't go too crazy with spending, but we're trying to build, 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 build now. I mean, if we're going to spend all this money on Atlantropa, we might as well spend as much money as we possibly can on the infrastructure and on the industry, and God, I really want to go to Andorra, which actually someone from a previous video said that that's where they live, or they're actually Andorran, which is kind of cool. I know absolutely nothing about Andorra, except that it's a very, very, very tiny place in, well, between Spain and 
France. Very, very tense. Hey, here we go. And how about, how about you and me? <gasps> Look at that. 52% towards completion. Ah, oh, so nice. And actually, the workers are content still, which is good. Let's go ahead and release a book. Salazar, what are your options? We shall release a book. Why not? Very good. Very, very, very good. And Antonio de Oliveira. Salazar has recently finished writing his first book and over 30 years of political experience, first at the head of the Estado Novo Regime and now is one of the Cadillos of Iberia. During this time, he has surmounted many challenges, both political and personal in nature, and he's drawn on his wealth of experience in creating this masterpiece of Iberian literature, painstakingly dictated to the secret to his secretary over the course of several months. The first draft is ready to be composed. Salazar, however, has yet to decide what to keep and what to cut from his unwieldy transcript, ever so diligently cop copied out and perfected by his assistants. Two directions to take the book in have been suggested to him by his close associates that of a manifesto of his own political beliefs or an autobiography of his personal struggles during his life. Salazar himself expressed that a political statement to guide the Iberian people would be an apt legacy for him to leave behind, but the idea of an inspiring ep personal epic appeals to him greatly as well, with the Cadillo remembering or remaining indecisive, and the papers continuing to pile up on his desk. It may be pragmatic to convince him to make a final decision. What should it be? Philosophy. Personal struggles. Ooh... I, I kind of like the political philosophy one. Personal struggles. Uh, that might end up being good. Hmm. Memoirs. Hmm. And I'll do personal struggles. Why not? He can't screw us up that much, right? The con content. With the genre of Cadu's new book having been decided, Bon Sal's our secretary and his assistants have religiously prepared suitable extracts from the initial transcript over the course of a few weeks. Heavy extract having been chosen for its particularly inspiring and powerful advice, vivid descriptions of Salazar's experiences or Salazar's enlightened political philosophy. Salazar has so far been delighted with the choices presented to him by his assistants, but has yet to decide on specifically what he wants in the book, whether it is to be personal or a personal heartfelt book aimed at imparting Salazar's enthusiasm and advice to the reader in order to rouse Iberian people to greater things, or to be a ceremonious and authoritative text containing Salazar's prescriptions for society, aimed at safeguarding the Iberian state, guiding the politicians of tomorrow, and preserving the legacy he has painstakingly worked to build during his time in office. Either way, the Cadillo doesn't seem to be rushing to make a decision, and the book has taken up enough official time as it is. Salazar should be encouraged to choose the passages he wants to include in his masterpiece post haste, and not as not only do state papers line Salazar's desk on red and urgent bureaucratic work left untouched, but the second caudillo, Francisco Franco, himself is becoming concerned with Salazar's apparent idleness. A decision must be made. Prescription for society. Let's go with prescriptions for society. That can never go wrong, as we shall next do retrieving our troops. Following the reorganization of the world order, the Mediterranean powers gained access to a second-rate portion of the spoils of war. Despite this, the large colonial holdings that the members of the Triumvirate acquired are nothing to be scoffed at in order to protect them from outside influence and internal instability. A number of unitary military missions were sent across the empires. In these days, we can no longer justify the stationing of our troops in Italian and Turkish territory. Allies of old had become bitter enemies. We must now recall our troops so there is no justification for an international crisis, and we shall re redeploy them to more necessary fields of operation across our own empire. In the conclusion, now that the Caldeo has decided on specific contents of his book, he has one final decision to make before this paragon of Iberian literature can be sent to the printing presses. A conclusion has yet to be written, and Salazar is torn between concluding that it would be the educated elite that will guide Iberia towards a bright and proud future, or that it would be the common Iberian toiling away that will bring about a golden age for the Iberian people. While favoring the intelligentsia, will most likely submit Salazar's book as his magnum opus and possibly increase the loyalty of the intellectuals to the Cadullo, concluding that the common people will determine the future of Iberia could help to foster a wider support for the regime, as well as cynically generating a larger profit for the publisher and himself to pocket. Salazar, however, is more concerned with its popular reception than what a few jumped up tops think, and while it may be a difficult and lengthy series of arguments needed to convince him of the political benefits of dedicating to dedicating it to Iberian intellectuals, it may be expedient to make him see this point of view. Alternatively, letting Salazar have his way is surely the quicker route to the publication, and more importantly, back to work for Salazar. What should be what should he be convinced to conclude the book with? A declaration that the educated will guide Iberia towards a greater future? The common Iberian will lead the way towards a greater future. Ooh, that is tough to hmm. The common Iberian. Uh, seeing as there's technically probably more Spaniards than there are Portuguese people, if we do the common Iberian, he's going to reach out to more Spaniards, and they probably don't care, so a declaration of the common Iberian will lead the way towards a great future. And this might piss off the aristocracy, or maybe even intellectuals. I doubt it will, but let's see what happens. Franco, Salazar, Franco, Salazar, Franco. Not bad, but Salazar has a lot of support. Probably more support than we do of uh, anything else here. So, mm, can we invest more money yet? 
Yes, we can. We need just a little bit more on Salazar's book. It's a lackluster response. Oh, no. Much to the dismay of Salazar, his book has been a complete flop, both domestically and internationally. In no intellectual of significance anywhere, let alone in Iberia, has commented positively the work, and it's with its most commonly being described as confused, unfocused, literary mess by the Iberian intelligentsia. Not only have intellectuals described the book as a muddled and tangled web of political ideas and personal experiences, but they've also said these ideas included are vague and too difficult to digest, and the experiences are particularly tedious affairs, and at some points, painfully boring to read through according to one particularly scathing reviewer. The common Iberian also found the book hard to engage, citing many similar criticisms that the inte intellectuals have expressed, but quite often in much coarser words. Franco, of course, has endorsed his fellow ruler's work, though it seems more out of professional courtesy than for its own merit. Poor sales and a bad reception make it unlikely for the republisher to agree to a second production run of the book, and Salazar is reportedly distraught to see the sale price of his work in shop windows be struck down lower and lower as the proprietors try to make at least some return on the purchased stock. For now, it seems, Salazar's career as an author has come to an abrupt end, and the Caudillo has been left greatly disheartened and bittered by the whole affair. Perhaps we could have done it with a clearer message. Good. Good. Sorry, Salazar, we like you, dude. We really do, but we got we have a country to save. And here. Let's see, adding more money. Let's see. Workers get more and more pissed off. Is there any way I can reduce their piss offness? Or their anger? No? Uh, I want to upgrade the cranes next. Only, only three million. We want to get this done as fast as possible. So let's build a hydroelectric power plant. That'd be good. 52% done. Nice. Very, very good. So we're Franco, Salazar, Franco, Salazar, Franco. So Ooh, Russia's still at war, but no one really cares. Uh, yeah. Fully Salazar for settlers. Fully Salazar. Mostly Salazar for bureaucrats. Seems like a mess. It really just seems like one gigantic mess. Oh, we're still putting it up. Oh, good, and we're still trying to get some more synthetic fineries. Russia, don't even bother with it. It's just it's just one giant mess. A5, look at that. Beautiful. Castillo must have maxed out infrastructure, which is nice. Very, very good. And we'll treat our troops very soon. State of the Union is still stable. Iberian Economic Nightmare, which we need to get rid of. Oh my goodness, that is not good. What is this? Ooh, death of Prime Minister Plek P. Betrayal of the Old Guard. Oh. But let us go ahead and retrieve our troops and expel Italian advisors. During the former times of cooperation, the Italian army continued the tradition of supporting right-wing elements in Iberia built up following its fascist seizure of power. Following the unification of the peninsula and the formation of the Triumvirate, a number of Italian military missions were sent to Iberia in order to help in modernizing the fledgling Iberian army and organizing better communication channels for future allied operations. However, now that the anti-German alliance has been broken and the relations are at a low point, there seems to be no more reason to keep the missions alive in the country. We should move to expel the foreign mi military personnel the less they begin to parse back sensitive information to the Italian state. Even if our own army may be against this move, we will have to prioritize the security of the Iberian state. Which would be a good thing, and even though we're not, like, we don't have a lot of ships, I don't want to lose all that, so... Oh man, we could even maybe make an early carrier, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I think we already have this on here, anti-air. Uh, now go for that. Radar 5. That's not too bad. That's not great. It's not bad. Alright, well, we spent some. We didn't spend enough. Early battleship, I'm probably not even going to use those. Destroyer 3s? What do we have to... Oh, God. Um, hmm. Level 1s? Um, kind of okay. Um, kind of okay. Sub 2s? Basic Mark 1s? What's the difference between this one and a Mark I? Uh, yeah, let's get rid of this one. Uh, actually, that's not too bad, maybe. These are both sub-2s. That has... Why do you have guns on those? These ones... Torpedo room? Well, might as well spend the things we got now. Better torpedoes? Alright, so that's not too bad. Yeah, this is the one we were working on. Yes, it is. Uh, get rid of that. Get rid of everything else underneath it. There you go. If you want to build something, build some uh, some of these guys. Maybe you got enough things, make some carriers too. They're not great, but they'll work. Appointed Prime Minister of Thailand. Cool. Uh, were we making... Oh, we're making convoys. That's fine. There you go. Actually, you can put 10 on here? Oh, that's kind of different. That's definitely different. I'll be done by October 14th, 65, and... February is 1964, so be it. Uh, we're still out of stuff here, it looks like. Maybe you guys are actually okay. You subs are doing okay. You don't even have an admiral, though. Doesn't seem like we have a sea wolf, so expel Italian advisors. Very good. A medical Thomas. Very good. And now we shall do pull our investments from Italy. 
In the days of our alliance with Italy, we pursued deep-seated economic and military integration projects to bolster our combined strength against the Germans as a major part of the Iberian, a major part of this, Iberia, invested heavily into Italy and its colonial empire, ensuring that the fruits of industrialization and progress could be felt across the Middle East and Africa. Now, however, we stand at odds with our former ally. This has threatened the security of our investments as colonial governors or even the Italian government itself could move to nationalize our precious capital. In a bid to strengthen our own hand and show off our diplomatic might, we should pull all of our investments out of the Italian sphere, even if it damages local economies and angers business interests on the ground. Workers and business opinion of Franco. That is not ideal. That is really not ideal, man. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. I, uh, I, I'd say probably no, but go and do this. Good. Oh, we still can't... Oh, we only... Four, God dang, we only 4 million? Um, then added lighting to the electrical section, then. Let's do that. So we still have 1 million, so this way when we get the option to get 2 more million, and then 3 more million, we're going to go to upgrade the cranes eventually. We will. I promise. We will. It's just this budget, this, this thing takes so long to build. The Alan Theropol project actually... Oh! The Jewish Madagascar group is done. I want to finish this so badly. Well, Rex Commissariat, Madagascar is once again back. Led by Emil Maurice. We're still waiting for this civil war right, to happen down here, right? I think so. Culture is Swana. Cape Town culture is Cape. Lesotho is Sotho. Could have probably told me that and what, didn't have to look at that. So how's Russia doing? Who's winning here? Tomska is looking pretty thick. Conservative democracy, pull investments from Italy, and then we shall do good morning is enough. With the collapse of the Triumvirate Alliance, many hawks within our government have gained the impetus to claim that what we now need to take an entirely hostile stance with those who have chosen to betray our trust. Yet in reality, our decision-making cannot be left to such simple emotional responses. Italy and Turkey will remain our neighbors in a Europe that is still largely dominated by the Germans. We must maintain some semblance of diplomatic ties with both Mediterranean nations to best suit our national security needs. Yes, and actually, let's come over here. So, okay, so the military is still Franco-aligned. Uh, nothing really changed up here so far. At least that's what it looks like. A more cheat up Siberian Black Army. Who's that? Krasnoyarsk? Oh, who are the heck are you? Andriv. No Focus 3. Big sadness. Big, big sadness. And getting, trying to get research refineries takes quite a while. Quite a long time. Now, I love building up roads, but let's get some things here. 100% out of Madrid. Thank you. I know I'm ignoring Lisbon and Portugal. In general, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Oh, I don't remember when Mr. Schmittler dies. Is he still a leader? He's still a leader, right? Oh, he's look, he looked like he's about to kick the, the bucket, man. Oh, my goodness. And with Alec Douglas home. Own people hate. Oh, oh, they're still going down here. Ah, expel the radicals. Oh, they're actually trying to do everything here, huh? Okay, cool. Good luck, guys. So... Cadillo's debate bombed. Yet another disaster has, has hit Iberia, as an explosion has gone off in a Coruña. The bombing, believed to be targeting Franco Salazar and the close allies, nearly avoided decapitating the Iberian government due to the Cadillo's being delayed and declaring a lunch break. Several regional separatist groups have declared responsibility for the attack, which killed 34 people and wounded nearly 100. However, primary suspicions are directed at a Galician left-wing nationalist group with alleged German funding. Hmm, is it really German funding, or is it like Burgund? Funding. Oh, stability. Oh, cr mm, I don't want to touch that. I really don't want to touch that. Do I have to touch that? Well, it seems like we probably have to. But I don't want to. I really don't want to, please. Do I have to touch that? No. No, please, no. Okay, we'll touch it. New focus tree? Not yet. Well, at least this way we can get more political power since we're waiting, so Cadillus announced a reform program. Okay, new focus tree. Shaken by the attempts on their lives, the twin Cadillus have announced a new renewed program to take or make Iberia slightly less dysfunctional. Although specific details are murky, rumors are that the old proposal of the Iberian Council to replace the useless legislator is going to be renewed. At least we're going to get some sort of reform, but call an Iberian Council. The Portuguese road debacle brought uh, to our attention the incompetence and excessively bureaucratic nature of the purely executive decision-making system. The following year of inconclusive debates filled to the brim with vetoes made it even more clear that any serious decision-making was impossible under the current system. Then the A Coruña bombing happened. Galician terrorists nearly killed our beloved Cadillos, a tragedy that would have surely torn the part of the Union. This disaster shocked the Cadillos into action, and made them realize that a more stable, long-term system of government must be established. As such, an Iberian Council has been devised, serving as a tool to deal with regional conflicts and help the various stages reach agreement. Uh, or various states reaching agreement, instead of getting bogged down in the endless bureaucratic quagmire that was a former system. Yet the nature of the Council is in question. Should it play a purely advisory role, or serve in a limited legislative capacity? It sounds like to really get some reforms going through. Uh, let's see. Empower them. An advisory council. It seems like it'd probably be best to empower the council. 
the way we want to go. I'd love to have the Cadillos rule alone and watch them closely. Representation in name only. Come on, Bing. But, oh my goodness, I would I would love to go that way, but it seems like amending the, Amer the Iberian Constitution would probably be the best. But let's do summoning representatives. The heinous terrorist attack at E Coruña has led the Cadillos to reevaluate the needs of the Iberian state. Salazar and Franco have now decided to summon regional representatives to the capital to discuss the creation of an Iberian council to help them resolve the issues plaguing Iberia. To this end, a decision needs to be made, though. This proposed council can be given more legislative power, still under the guidance of the Cadillos, of course, or can act as nothing but a rubber stamp for Franco and Salazar, a decisive government, or a strong legislature. Uh, I, I like I said, I want to go here. I really do. Well, we probably have to empower the Iberian Council. Our country's been in legislative hell for far too long. Veto this, veto that, veto everything, veto nothing. This needs to end if we want to have any chance at escaping this endless loop. Thankfully, our gracious Cadillos has decided to create a council specifically to handle our disorganized political mess. Ooh. Yes, land auction stuff? Good. Get some more organization and reinforcement? Yes, please, because we will be fighting eventually someplace, maybe in Algeria someday. Hmm, Cadillo popularity. More money to the budget? Good. Oh, start the east side lock system? Military spending. You know what? We've got it. Oh, I don't. I shouldn't spend money now. I really shouldn't. Uh, raise worker salaries? They're not pissed off yet, are they? They could be very pissed off soon, but as long as they're not, like, angry, we'll be okay, right? For now, let's save a little bit of... Oh, I want to save a little bit of money that way. Uh, if we only have half a million dollars, that's not going to do much for us. Three million... This is a subject surveillance system, maybe. Let's go and do that, whatever. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Less than a billion already? Every slash spending even further. Oh, they're quite the save, huh? Oh boy. Oh boy. Hopefully the game is still recording. Because it was almost... It gave me that window sign. That would not be good. My apologies about that. I just wanted to double check things to make sure things weren't going wrong. But let's go ahead and determine rep regional representation. Maybe, maybe not, but amend the Iberian Constitution. We need to make a constitution to state exactly what our powers the, our council will have it at their disposal. To achieve this end, we will pass a few new fundamental law, or fundamental law, to assure the council's power is stable and secure. It'll take about a month. The Cadillas clarify the council's purpose. As the representatives arrive in Madrid and file into the palace of parliament, armed officers of the Guardia Civil blocked streets off in preparation for the beginning of the first Iberian Council. The Cadillas, as expected, are both present and standing sternly in their uniforms. Instead of entering the chamber of deputies, however, the representatives are escorted to a small conference room. It is there that the 30 representatives, dispatched by Iberia's smaller governments, shall be briefed. They are informed of their new duties through distribution of packets of paperwork hastily stamped with the compromised coat of arms of Iberia. Their duty, in a surprising move by the infamously aloof and detached Cadillos, is to serve a new, limited Iberian legislature that answers to nobody but the Cadillos. While it remains unknown precisely what powers they will have, it appears that this will be a significant step towards in resolving the bureaucratic problems that cripple the nation. Hopefully decisions can be made. And invest more money. That'd be good. It'd be very, very good. We've got a whole million dollars here now. Uh, creation of the new Iberian Council. A good measure, for sure. Let's hope so. 7.66. Oh, boy. Oh, income to deficit ratio is doing a little bit better. we got a little bit more manpower now, which is nice. Very, very nice. We still don't have this as all. Well. I'd like to make a nuclear reactor. That'd be really cool. That'd be very, very cool. All right, not bad. And we have, like, halfway done with that already. We still have a month and a half until this is done. Ready, Bink? Bing, Bing. That's going to take so long to get, uh... Oh, wait. Resource extraction? Yeah. It's still so long to do. Good. Another division is done. I don't know if we really need a, a lot of divisions, but we'll see what happens. Oh, oh, you're back. Already? Okay, what happened here? How did we get more money? Or why is it deficit? Oh, it's because we do this. That's why. Okay. There we go. Fix it. Alright, if that's the case, I want to build more of these guys. I really want more of these. Coming to Madrid. Uh, I'm going to put you on low, actually. Get reinforcements. Go upgrades. Probably wouldn't be too bad. Obviously, we have no army XP, which really, really sucks. And I'm going to trade our soldiers soon. I just want to make sure we have enough, like, guns before we really start doing stuff like that. But amend the Iberian Constitution. Determine legal political stances. While we don't have to worry about much from those who align with us, there's a danger with allowing, allowing certain political ideologies to exist within the council. We have to make a decision on liberalism, whether or not we should ban those who align with it, and even... God dang it. Just slide this way. 
The law of the organic state. In order to ensure that the Iberian Council has a reasonable amount of power and the ability to perform the task it has been entrusted with, a new fundamental law of the realm has been passed. The First Amendment to the original fundamental laws of Iberia since the late 1940s. This law, at least in writing, gives the Iberian Council several powers, such as the ability to levy federal taxes and issue federal laws with the approval of Salazar and Franco. It remains unknown, however, how much power the legislative body will actually be able to exert. Good things to keep things legal. Yeah, as long as they're legal, they're okay, right? Uh, we're actually making some good stuff here. Not too bad. 79 stuff? Oh. Alright, seems like we can make some more things here. Salazar talks to the bishops. Ooh. Franco tours and ministries. If I do one of these, this could really screw me up. So, business summit? Hmm, ministries? Well. <sighs> hmm. Let's talk to the bishops. Why not? Let's try that. Let's we'll try that. Why not? And still not bad. That's less than a billion. So Salazar enters sanctuary of Fatima. It was a crisp, clear morning in the Portuguese municipality of Orum. Our white, the white marbles running all around the sanctuary of Fatima reflected this morning's sun's brilliance. Bathing the plaza in warmth and light, as usual, Salazar's modest motorcade arrived early, and Cadillo Portugal found himself with the time to burn before his appointment with the Portuguese bishops. Waving off his bodyguards to permit them a cigarette break, Salazar squinted up at the gold-plated cross atop the spire of the Central Catholic Central Cathedral as he pondered how to go about his discussion with the bishops. It had been some time since he had dealt with the clergy directly, despite them, despite their major role. In Estado Novo. Will they be simple, honest men like the ordinary priests he had known growing up, or illustrious and regal figures representative of the Church of Wealth and Power? What approach would be best to speak to them and win them over? How it become, once considered becoming a priest, focus on the issues. Uh, we want them, we want Salazar to mess up, so. It seems like if Salazar talks about how he wanted to become a priest, that sounds like nothing is going to get done, and that might piss off the Church more, so I'll go with that. So, bishops. Oh, crap. Oh, I made the wrong choice here. Ah, bishops weren't Salazar. I had no idea Senor Salazar, Bishop Anselmo, had said. Clearly impressed to be so personally invested in the church at such a young age was rare even amongst my own generation. Though you were surely called by God to your vocation, I feel the church has diminished simply in its inability to count you among its servants. If that wasn't in the sound of successfully charming his way into the confidence of some of the most influential men in Iberia, Salazar didn't know what was. Despite his age, a chauffeur looked, noticed a confident energy in the Cadullo as he took a seat in the back of the limousine and opened up some light reading. The bishops, too, parted ways with Salazar, feeling decidedly more relaxed about dealings with the Cadullos in the future. Franco had been so coarse, despite his faith and good intentions. Their own quiet, charismatic countryman was far more agreeable and clearly a reliable brother in Christ. A cordial smile, it seemed, answered far more of the questions than a stack of government pamphlets. Salazar is clearly getting the trust of the church. God dang it, I did not mean for that to happen. That doesn't make any sense. Like, is the church not more concerned about... I guess the church is not more concerned about people. Like, ooh, 58% down for the dam. But, like, yes, that's nice that Salazar is considered himself growing up, maybe hopefully becoming a priest, but... Seriously? Like, come on. Oh, and there goes Hitler. Okay, bye-bye, Hitler. Bye-bye. Um, yeah, I don't know. That actually really screwed us up. Now we're Franco, Salazar, Franco, Salazar. No, Franco, Salazar, Salazar, Franco. There we go. So we've got to do some more things. If I do a business summit or turn the ministry, things are going to get probably not very good for Franco. And it looks like Germany is really having a bad time, which is fine with us. But we can always see. Oh, see, now we're strongly conservative. Credit is a 10 as an attempt to extend the useful life of the regime. The Iberian Council acts as a little more than a puppet legislature. Its job is rubber stamping the laws that the government makes, but the sheer number of council members, 500, makes it more influential than the Cadillos originally thought. Instead of the council, two thought groups have already formed. On one side, the so-called conservatives or orthodox believe that Iberia is perfect as is, and on the other, ah, uh, Germany's having a problem. They believe that Iberia is perfect as it is, and on the other, the liberals, they call themselves reformists, think that reforming the system is the only way Iberia can survive. These two factions clash against each other in the council floor, but their goals won't be achieved, at least for now. The council is currently very, very conservative. And so it begins. Determine the legal and political stances. Codify the council's powers. Now that the council exists and has been given stated powers, perhaps we should do something to keep them under control? We have the option of to limiting what they're able to do, or we can just allow them all their stated powers. We need to make a decision on this. All I know is spend money determining determining the legal status uh, or stances. 
From the events of the Spanish Civil War and the crisis Portugal was embroiled in before the Estado Novo, we have ample reason to ban liberal opinions within the Iberian Council. However, as has been already been pointed out by several advisors, doing this could potentially alienate Opus Dei, which is a prominent promising organization. Despite the wishes of both Cadillos, it may be necessary to liberalize our regime somewhat. In the case of letting some more liberal elements go onto the stage, we will have to watch it much more closely to root out subversion, but the benefits could potentially outstrip the expenditure of resources. Ban them, they cannot be trusted. I like this a lot. I like that idea, but let them in, but keep an eye on them. Let's go do that. And we could spend a million dollars to improve worker security, but they're already content. They're only building stuff all the time. That's okay. Horizontal Industrial Organization 2. Not bad. And we are now considered a conservative. 20 out of 100 reform. Oh, we got... Yes, we got both done. Nice. I'm going to go for resource extraction next, which would be great. And then we got this one done. That one, that one, that one. 63. We could probably get military construction too. That'd be good. We, we need to build military factories eventually. Not sure when, but eventually. Eventually. Chaos and Auslan. Arek divided. Bowman. Kash disappearance causes Muscovine turmoil. Cool. Very cool. A little bit of lag. Still quite some more lag. Uh, it looks like they're demilitarizing Offsland. And it looks like Muscovine is just exploding right now. There we go. Goal rings Germany. Spider assumes control of Germania. Ordenshaw Burgundy or Burgund is going to war. Brittany, Brittany declared war on the French state. That is not good for them. That's expansion into Africa. Oh, the world just colli- Oh, that's a nice Poland. The Warsaw Uprising. Very cool. No focus here, but that's okay. English Civil War begins. <sighs> Things are finally looking up for the world. Gotta love it. Spend more money on the dam. And now we can upgrade the cranes. Reduce maintenance cost. 78 million, that's quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do start the west side lock system. Because it costs the most, we might as well get that done now. Opportunities arise in Algeria. Oh boy. Hidden heroes, huh? So, events on the European continent have taken quite the turn with the latest news. We've been given some solid reports that the Burgundian tanks have rolled into France in what is sure to be a one-sided and very short war. With France being further captured by their Nazi overlords, all claims of French legitimacy, legitimacy to the land of Algeria have disappeared overnight. We all know they have bigger issues at hand at the moment than to defend from our advances. We've been ended a golden opportunity here. This opportunity does not come around very often, and we would be foolhardy to pass up such an endeavor. Moves will have to be made, and made fast before anyone else wizens up, or wisens up, to what's going on here. Plans and meetings need to be sorted quickly so we can jump on this before any other opportunist. One thing is certain, though, for the moment, that's all right is for right now is for the taking. And there are no limits as to what we could do down in Algeria. We shall make moves in Algeria and accept all the necessary consequences. Ooh. We lost... Oh, we can't, oh come on. I'm not going to read that again. We're going to do that, though. Germany in flames. Oh, yes. Tension in Algeria. I want Algeria for us. There's been a vast power vacuum in Algeria for decades now, just waiting for, to be filled. Now, with the Burgundian invasion of France, the vacuum has grown even wider with France's loss in the Burgundian War comes also the loss to any pretenses of French legitimacy in the region. They're incapable of protecting their own European borders, never mind those of their colonial belongings. We would be fools to let this ultimately op this ultimate opportunity slip us by, by and allow Algeria to remain an official French territory, or worse yet, allow it to fall into the hands of our Italian rivals instead. We shall lay claim to this region as a rightful part of the Iberian Union. How exactly we go about this plan will no doubt be debated extensively in the coming days. And, oh, we're done. Debrief Yadim. We will, in order to go through with our new plan for Algeria, we'll need to inform Jorg Yadim of the latest developments in our Algerian policy. Yadim is our main man down over in Algeria's way, and shall be needed to keep up with the sudden changes to our advances over the region. Any plan, formulation, or strategy will need to run past him in order to make sure chaos does not reign over Iberian-controlled Algeria. There are amongst the most critical moments in the campaign, and thus, to put a step Wrong now could doom the entire endeavor to monumental failure. In order to such a calamity, Yardim will need to be thoroughly debriefed. He shall need the knowledge from his debriefing to, in order to keep this during this critical time. For if anarchy reigns during this demanding occasion, then all shall be lost before the intervention has even begun. Yardim will certainly need to keep on top of things, and we shall do our best to keep him informed of all the latest developments. Okay, so because of this, I'm going to go ahead and buy some oil. Because we need it. Uh, you know what? Let's have better relations with the Americans. Why don't we have two things of oil? Just so we can start stockpiling ourselves and finish off. Oh. Oh, Germany Flames. Nice. So this way we can finish off any training we, we have here. Uh, Serbia's having a bad time. Burgundy has done a great, great job. Serbs gamers rise up. Serbs rise up. Austin's on fire. If you need to finish training, go right ahead. If you need to finish training, go right ahead as well. Actually, you're all just destroyers, which really sucks. 
Colonel Donuts uses Crimea, that is fine. So this way, we can start stockpiling a little bit more fuel, hopefully. So when we do have to invade, we'll be ready with our tanks, which will be a great thing. A little bit more lag. Okay, then. All right, so emergency meetings. The situation down in Algeria is reaching a critical point. Tensions grow by the day and compete, and utter chaos could break out at any second. If we wait too long, then our Italian rivals may be able to get the upper hand. In order to avoid this great tragedy, emergency meetings between the Caudillos of Iberia and the top echelons of the Iberian military will need to be arranged post-haste. The reasoning behind these meetings are quite simple. Plans needed to be arranged rather quickly in order to gauge how best to handle the ever-growing situation in Algeria. If something isn't agreed upon quickly, then the opportunity provided to us will slip from our grasp. But we shall not fear not, for our top men are in the case to come up with a solution for the Algerian problem. Which we need to actually look at this. So, we can either go with South African War... Oh, no, no, no. A South African War. Is the game paused? It is. Cool. So, we can either go... Oh, we want to read this. Go right ahead. The dominoes shall stop. General Kazula's plan. Make reformists... Formers weaker in the council. Arms to settlers. Does it make things weaker? I don't want weaker. Prepare the strike. Don Henrique. Strengthen reformism. I kind of like that. Yardim's ambition... Matthias oil. But anyways. So opportunity rarely has a courtesy to knock at an opportune time. For your Yardim, opportunity interrupted a perfectly good breakfast. Were he a sensible man, he wouldn't have abandoned his poached egg and toasted bread for the letter apparently rushed to him from Madrid, but unfortunately for him, he was a politician and such sense was not allowed in the profession. Bright eyes quickly scanned the letter, absorbing both the written word and the unwritten intent behind all of them at once. He stood from the table as he reached uh, the end, his mind already turning over the newfound information. According to the letter, the Shadow State was storming into the French rump state, and to no one's surprise, the French were receiving the worst of the fighting. The French had been more or less a non-factor in over a decade, unable to maintain control of the much of the territory outside of Algiers itself. That's why they were here in Oran, after all, and the Italians on the other side of the garrison. But the letter was much more vague with its actual orders, a necessary tactic to maintain plausible deniability should it somehow fall outside of Iberian hands and cause a scandal. That didn't matter, though. They would, wouldn't have sent him this letter without knowing what he'd do once he got to reading it. Already, he was deep in thought, though. A spin! Iberia needed a spin to justify the acquisition of Algeria. While, yes, militarily occupied by both themselves and Italians, it was still legally French, and they weren't in a position to simply take the rest of the country by storm. After all, if they did that, they'd be fighting Italians, not the scarecrow army of the French state. So what excuse could they conjure up with that would prevent the Italians from intervening? He sat there deep in thought for some time, running through the scenarios in his head. It was clear that whatever scheme was cooked up, they'd have to work with the Italians directly to achieve it. So be it, they would have to play this one by ear. He took a big bite of his eggs, grimace as he chewed. Opportunity had made his eggs go cold, and the plotting has only begun. Very nice. So, let's see. We're going to finish up this uh, civilian factory. I don't want to build some synthetic refineries, though. Uh, uh, Out Madrid. Do both at the same time. Why not? Not bad. We're doing really well. Look at that deficit. Looking pretty nice. Less than uh, 900 million? Not bad, my friends. Not bad whatsoever. Okay, so you guys are all there. I, mm, You know what? We're not going to train. No, we should train. We should train. We should try to at least get out of green. We might not have all... Oh, we do have some guns. We're actually looking pretty good on supplies, except for support equipment. Emergency meetings? Cool. So, we want to go as more form. I'd love to go this way, but we got to go with Ambassador Moira's plan. Within the emergency meetings that have been occupied the head honchos of Avira with the question of what to do with Algerian situation, a solution has thankfully emerged. Ambassador Moira has come up with a plan that will hopefully avoid unneeded bloodshed and while still securing our position within Algeria. Moira's uh, plan has managed to win out in the proceedings and has been given the clear, or all clear, by the Caudillos as the best way to solve the Algerian situation. Moira's plan involves easing tensions in the region in order to avoid a conflict and the inevitable drain on manpower and resources that the war would cause. Instead, an olive branch will be extended to Italy with the goal of joint partnership in Algeria. It will be a tough road ahead and there will be compromises, but hopefully we shall not be bogged down in any long land war in the region. It's time to start up the negotiations and see if we can, can't solidify our place within Algeria through peaceful means. Even though I do really just want to take it over. I'll be honest, I just want to take it over. How is South Africa doing? Can we send volunteers? The plans for Algeria. In the modern age, military glory was becoming increasingly rare and difficult to come by, even as militaries all around the world continue to ceaselessly grow. The advent of the nuclear bomb and the resulting global stalemate seemed to all but halt the ambitions of those who had marked their places in history through conquest. And likewise, when force of arms failed, great men of silver tongues and willy diplomacy would often step up to the plate. But in these modern times, it seems like every rock, every blade of grass, and every grain of sand is owned by somebody, somewhere, and no one was interested in selling. The world was as small as it was ever going to be, and no one saw value in losing their corner of it. 
That's why, when the Kadir called the greatest military and diplomatic minds of Iberia together to discuss plans for the French colony of Algeria, they came not with vague ideas and concepts, but with papers, maps, and briefcases, and books worth of schemes. This was an opportunity that they all knew they'd never see again in their lifetimes, a chance to be known as a conqueror, through guns or through words of Algeria. Generals came with grand campaigns and elaborate war plans, some even going as far to invade Tunis and Libya should the Italians stand in their way. Diplomats cracked open briefcases to reveal grand schemes and plans to buy or swindle the Italian half of Algeria out from beneath their feet. When the Caduios made their call for all spheres of Iberia to form a plan together, they instead got a rapid and long succession of political sales pitches. This is going to take a while. Now, so we have the Boer Republic. Now, we have to get involved here, probably. They don't like us. They don't like us either. Um, I can't send volunteers. Two plans remain. It's a lot of reading. The moon was gazing down upon the military headquarters in Madrid when the Caduios finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel. After discarding the obvious losers, and then the, this, the less obvious losers, the Caduios were left with two plans to decide between. Among the generals, Calza de Arriaga's scheme made the most support, a limited war but with the added benefit of looking towards the white French colonials in Algeria for support, and the creation of a cooperative government with them in the process. The Calza uh, plan, as has been called since he first presented it to the Caduios, calls for open warfare in Algeria to simultaneously drive out the Italians and pacify the natives in all one fell swoop. The Junos have rallied support behind the plan, and we believe that Salazar will support them. Meanwhile, though, among the diplomats, Adriano Moira's plan has been proven to be the most attractive. Rather than approaching the Italian government directly, which would require a great deal of expense to acquire the it Italian half of the region, he proposes that Iberia should instead approach the Italian, Italian oil giant ENI. If they can convince that company to support the Iberian claim to Algeria in exchange for a generous deal on oil development in the region, ENI could in turn put much more intense pressure on Italy to accept the Iberian claim. The other diplomats and politicians have abandoned their own rejected plans to support the Moira plan and hope that Franco will support them in turn. The stage is set. And I want to help out South Africa because apparently that's a really good thing for us to do. So we also have to do this. And Cadillo's in disagreement. Uh, over here. We get matter of national security. Oh, well, actually, we have to get through this first, I guess. Instead of doing this stuff because we cannot have a crisis in Algeria. So we got to get through this as fast as possible. Interesting times. It was midday when Salazar entered the meeting room. Normally, they wouldn't meet at a time so oddly, but Franco had requested he enter it once he had fully collected his thoughts on the Algerian issue, and now one moment earlier or later. Sadly, what this meant was that Franco had to dedicate nearly the entire day to waiting for whenever his counterpart finally got around to attending. He was thankful then that they showed up shortly after lunch. As expected, Salazar got to talking and soon as he closed the door behind him. I have to see everything. But I made up my mind. Algeria needs to be secured. At any cost, it doesn't matter. We need to guarantee the retornandos a home. Franco began to open his mouth to respond, but Salazar snapped at him first. Don't start about pragmatism to me. Not about this. Those retornados were exiled from their home once already. I would rather die than let them be kicked out again, and so soon after the first time. Ariaga's plan will guarantee them their home, and he'll make sure those Italian bastards recognize it. <sighs> Franco, half side. Half grunted in a point. I can't fault you for being passionate about your people, but are you are refusing to see the larger picture. We need peace in Algeria. A war with them will win the land. Maybe. But then where will you be when they all die fighting for it? What good would it do, Salazar? Salazar started a response, getting out perhaps a word, half a word before Franco interrupted him. Whatever we said on, just remember that it needs to be unanimous. We need to look like a united front. Well, we'll see what happens. I definitely want to come down here, though. But the future of Algeria. Franco was in the same room again, this time reclined in a seat next to Salazar. He spared a glance to his colleague, who was more focused on the plans before them, before returning his gaze to Causa and Moira, who seemed more concerned. Morera. It's probably Morera. I've probably been saying that wrong this entire time. My bad. Who seemed to be more concerned with shuffling through their things. Eventually, both they both prepared to present, but Kazula managed to go first. Or he wanted to go first. He spoke loud, with a boisterous tone that showed his total confidence in his plans. He didn't have any formal charts or flashing models, but simply passed out two pieces of paper and laid a map out on the conference table. A map of Algeria. He detailed the situation as he saw it, then carefully explained how they could swipe the rest of the country from the Italians. To this end, he also explained the contents of the documents he passed out. They were manifests of the equipment they'd acquire, or require optimistically, to get the job done. Once Kazula finished, it was time for Moria's I keep saying that name wrong, I apologize, to present his plan for Algeria. During the war plan briefing, the politicians had taken time to properly set up a presentation, through, though his delivery left some to be desired. As he explained his plans, how working with the ENI could win Algeria, and how, how to make deals situated to look desirable to them. He pointed out the resources required, and how to best use them. With the style of utilizing as little words as possible, his side of the meeting concluded rather remarkably quickly. As both sides had finished their presentation, the Caduios spoke their verdict. While they both made designs to sell their plans, what the two didn't know was that the Caduios had both already decided. They told the two in the back and forth speech style that nothing but war will help us. A stronger Franco may improve the outcome. Uh, Oxman, improve the military's opinion, but words can win the toughest of battles. Oh, a stronger Franco may improve the outcome of the crisis. I did want to go with the right side because we do want to. Well, we already, we already kind of had this unlocked. Um, I like to go this, but we want more reformism. Okay, that just auto bypasses it, so that was a waste of time. Okay, 
Uh, native lands, why not? Or the rights. Let's go with rights. If one thing needs to be made certain in this new independent Algeria, it is the rights of the Portuguese retornados. They would be held to pay back in Iberia from Salazar and his cronies if the settlers had been bothered in any way at all. The settlers had begun flexing their position recently, and if any hint of uprooting their positions came about, then they would have no doubt kick up an, egg, an unignorable fuss. We don't need the Algerian negotiations to stir up tensions back home, so this is the position we need to stand on firm. We're sure the Italians will understand this, though. They have their own white man's burden in the continent that requires there to be a European settler presence in the region. Our negotiators shall hammer home this explanation, and will, this will likely help us come together on the issue, which only takes a week to accomplish, which is not bad. Not bad. As Germany is on fire, and hopefully stays on fire for quite a while, but got the rights done, Yardim's ambition. The transition into this new Algerian state will have to be a smooth one. In order to ensure this, Yardim will need to be bought off in some way in order to make sure he doesn't ruin this whole thing for us and the Italians. He may be feeling somewhat bitter about the ambiguity of this position in this new state, so we'll have to bribe the ambitious bastard before he does something that puts this whole thing in jeopardy. This will likely need to be something that can placate him, something big, no doubt. A ministerial position, and an important one at that, will have to be considered. It is a necessity, though. We can't afford for all these negotiations to be for naught and for there to be a conflict anyway. Let's just hope that we're matching whatever Yardim's dreams are. Yeah, let's make sure we are good with them. Uh, spend more money on the dam? Why not? Two million dollars, raise worker salaries. They're still content for now until they probably get pissed off too much. Uh, worker security? Huh. Or raise their salaries. Well, that doesn't help us complete it any faster. Just saying. 58% of the way done. Cool. Iberia at the triumvirate. These are still for Franco, which we don't want. Which we definitely don't want. So, Captain Gallo speaks out against the Cadillos. This morning, shocking news reached the offices of the Cadillos. Among the front pages of national newspapers was a breaking column. Captain Galvao, a prominent naval officer with the command of a significant vessel in the Iberian fleet, has gone public to national media to speak out against the leaders. In the media statement, the captain goes on at length to discuss what he perceives as continual oppression from the Cadillos and notable loss of freedoms across Iberia and mismanagement of the armed forces. Due to the status of this high-ranking military officer and the power he holds, the nation has gone into a frenzy over this breaking news. One can scarcely appear in public without hearing talk of the breaking headline. Strict rules are placed upon all members of the Iberian military, forbidding them to give opinions to the media without restrict approval and guidance from the public relations personal personnel or superior officers. Due to this, the testimony of that of Captain Gallo gave the media could see him immediately tried by court martial resulting in a dishonorable discharge. To commence such proceedings would need to speak to his direct superior officer. However, the captain's statement appears to be rather popular at the moment, and immediately sentencing him might be seen as by the public as a move of suppression, furthering the crisis. Letting the issue fester, however, is also far from ideal for the public image of the Cadillos. Speak to his commanding officer, ignore it. Um, ooh, that might lower our support, which I don't like. Speak to his Oh, uh, we could ignore it. Um, this is a really bad situation to be in, because honestly, military members should not be spoke speaking about their political ambitions and stuff, especially if they're still in the military. So, oh... I mean, I get it that we, we need, like, free some sort of speech. Maybe not necessarily super free speech. But, hmm. I'm going to say ignore it for now. Uh, either way, it sounds like it's, it's a bad decision for us to make. It just seems like a bad thing. I, I don't like either one there, man. I, hmm. Your deems ambition, though. So another letter has arrived in the mail, hearing an opportunity just as lucrative as the first. Today, Yardim had the wisdom to simply set it aside, finishing his breakfast before breaking into the plots and schemes. What were they going to do? Shoot him for a few minutes delay? The clinking of silverware uh, was music to his ears, just as the sensation of warm food was music to his mouth. Once he had finally had his hands to open a letter, Yardim plucked the envelope open with a fingernail and then scanned the page. Atent anticipation turned to curiosity, and from there to excitement, all in the space of a paragraph, as Yardim found himself unable to suppress a laugh. A brand new job, especially for him, as soon as he was finished with his senior in Algeria. Even better, they're going to pay him for the work he has wasn't doing yet. Yet, day to day was going to be a good day, he was already sure. Meanwhile, back in Iberia proper, there was no laughing for the top brass. Yardim was going to join the... To join, found the entire affair much less amusing. Perhaps it was jealousy, maybe a resentment, or even contempt, but it did not matter where it was coming from, for the end result was the same. Quite a few were unhappy with a new promotion, not least because there wasn't he wasn't even out of Africa yet. Worsens oh crap, what is going on here? So, it's gonna worsen the settlers' opinion of Franco, which doesn't matter. It's improved foreign leaders' perception of Franco. Foreign leaders don't care. Worsen bureaucrats reform of Franco. And now they're fully aligned, fully Franco, fully Salazar, which is okay. Fully of Salazar, lean sword Franco. This is not good. This is really, really not good. Oh man, I could tour the ministries. Um, hmm. Business summit. Businessmen don't have a preference and ministries. That seems like uh, the church. So let's go click on that one. Oh, and let's do the next focus. 
native land. We, of course, cannot be forgetting about the natives down over in Algeria. Luckily for them, we shan't be abandoning them to their own barbaric rule of trouble, infighting, or whatever they were doing before the Europeans came along. Instead, they will no doubt be enjoyed to, over to hear what they will be giving some guided independence from ourselves and the Italians. It would be an act of great tragedy if we were to just leave the natives in their own rotten ways. We will guide them to a true civilization, just as we've always have, and they shall be all the more grateful for it. Those that resist this act of kindness in their own foolish barbaric notions of self-determination shall be met with a righteous amount of force in this new Algeria in the same way as the old one. Very, very good. Hopefully this ministry thing goes on okay. Not exactly sure which way we should do, but you know what? Annual deficit is almost 800 million. That's nice. But unfortunately, we're going to end this episode here because I want to make sure I choose the right thing for this. But anyways, hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving maybe a like, a subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we talk about education and the Algerian crisis. So thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.